Hi, I'm David Miller with Next Generation Assessment, and I am a professor in research and evaluation methods at the University of Florida and the director of the School of Human Development and Organizational Studies and Education. And today we're, we're pleased that we're going to be talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, from an accreditor's point of view. And I want to introduce also my co-host, Tammy Cummings. One, thank you, David. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at Brooklyn College of the City University of New York. And it's such an honor to welcome back Heather Perfetti, the President of the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. Welcome, Heather. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, David. It's great to be with you again. Well, thanks. It's great to, great to be talking to you. Uh, our opening question today is that we just uh, really uh, have been watching all the uh, various commissions and the work they've been doing with regard to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we just sort of wanted to get a good idea of, of where the Middle States Commission is on those uh, issues and how you're beginning or uh, how you have been addressing those issues. Great. Thank you for that question. So I think you both know that I am so proud of our commission's podcast, Pillars of Change, where we now have a number of episodes featuring presidents from our institution sharing insights and practices on diversity, equity, and inclusion. This podcast was viewed more as a call to action uh, where we were hoping that institutions could inspire each other and where we could together promote a more just society on our campuses and within our communities. And I think um, if, if you've not had a chance to listen to our podcast series, I encourage you to do so. Um, every president interviewed recognized the critical role that higher education plays in forming solutions. And there was one president in particular who referred to the magic of critical thinking and discussions that result in bigger and better solutions. So you can find those podcasts at MSCHG slash Pillars of Change. We also have there a nomination form. So for your listeners who have uh, a recommendation to make someone or an institution that they feel should be featured through our podcast, they can fill out that form and submit that nomination to us for consideration. But let me talk about some other ways that we're also addressing diversity, equity, and inclusion beyond the podcast. Uh, our recent annual conference with Tammy, you and I had just briefly referenced before we kicked off here, we gathered 1,200 higher education professionals and we were able to feature DEI work and in particular, what was being done with our largest system of higher education in the State University of New York, where presidents and system representatives are also talking about steps beyond statements, where communities are being engaged to co-create solutions. A lot of discussion, a lot of sharing, a lot of celebrating around solutions. So our facilitating this important work through discussion and dialogue is one way that our commission is sharing and addressing DEI initiatives and practices. But other ways also include the evaluation of our standards and requirements. And so you both may know we are in the midst of this review of our standards for accreditation and requirements of affiliation. Following a launch of this process at the annual conference, we have been holding listening sessions where we're collecting feedback as part of this periodic assessment that we undertake. And so through these listening sessions held in January and February, we've been asking our constituents to provide us with feedback specific to standards that may be appropriate to address our increasingly diverse student population. Comments from our constituents have ranged from specific suggestions relating to the standards, as well as expanded areas beyond students and curriculum to ensure that DEI is considered for faculty, for staff, for administration, and for governing boards and bodies. 
strong support has come through the feedback that diversity, equity, and inclusion should be reflected in our standards. The form it takes is still under review and consideration. But as part of all of this feedback, we've also heard the commission should think about the definition of those terms. And so we will be defining those terms from our commission's perspective, as well as sharing even more with constituents, which is part of the feedback that we have received. So we have a team working on this. We'll be having additional conversations with our commission about the results of the listening session, the feedback we've received, and more generally about the standards review. Any proposed changes that may then appear within our standards would go back out for public comment. So constituents would have more time to reflect on the position that our commission took or the direction that we went, and we would then engage in an additional process of review. This is not an overhaul of our standards, and I feel like I have to say that in every venue because people get nervous that we might change everything, and it's too soon uh, to do that. This is a reflective pause uh, to focus on what we've learned already from the standards since they've been implemented and to look at five specific areas. And one of those areas has been diversity, equity, and inclusion. So a lot of exciting work uh, that we are supporting as a commission. And I'm looking forward to uh, the next weeks and months where we will roll out even more to our constituents. Thanks, Heather. And it has been a whirlwind of activity at Middle States. The conference was wonderful this year. Everyone was glowing, saying what a great session that you had on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think with the pandemic occurring, that is one of the positives that may have come out of it. A lot of attention has been paid to this issue. We've seen Chia now have a new standard on diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. And in our work, David and I, um, in this area, we've held uh, focus groups with college presidents and diversity officers. And what you mentioned is very uh, telling here because we heard the same thing. People would like a working definition for what we're actually referring to so that we're on the same page when we're having these really important discussions. And I wanted to know what you thought about the impact in all of this work with diversity, equity, and inclusion, what we'll see with the work that you've been doing with the podcast, the resources that you have, the town halls where you're reflecting upon your standards, what do you think the impact will be for the institutions that are accredited under middle states? So I think we will be discovering some of what this will look like as it comes together once our commission has an opportunity to review all of the great feedback we've collected uh, across these um, different areas. So they will then set the next steps for what DEI will look like soon from our commission's perspective. And they're going to be talking about that at their next couple of meetings. But what I can say now, and this is nothing uh, uh, new to those who may be listening, but accreditation remains about making institutions stronger for the benefit of students. And so our standards remain mission and student-centered and this naturally lends to accreditation playing a role, an important role, when thinking about DEI work. Everything we do is grounded in honest self-reflection and meaningful change for institutions. So establishing, supporting, sharing, celebrating highly effective DEI institutional practices we know can and will make a difference in the lives of our students, our faculty, our staff, our communities, and even more profoundly across the higher education community and within society. So what you will see and what you can expect from the commission is some direction around DEI as it reflects within our processes, within our standards, but that will always be driven by the mission and student-centered nature of the existing standards. But we've been real pleased with the feedback we've received so far. We've been uh, incredibly pleased to see the participation at the listening sessions, even those who may not have comments to make, 
during those sessions. They may have submitted written feedback to us as part of our collecting thoughts and insights on DEI, or they just wanted to listen in to what others were sharing, which may have prompted some additional feedback from them at a later session or through some additional written feedback. So, so I'm looking forward to the next steps of our gathering the information for our commission and their holding discussions, and then pushing it out to the membership and the public to consider the direction that we took. I think it's always important to remember that our standards and our requirements belong to our membership. Uh, we push out the standards for reflection and review and feedback prior to finalizing any new pieces within the standard. So we're looking forward to those next steps. It sounds like you have a, a process that is doing a great job of involving the members uh, of, of uh, of the middle states, and and that's that's really a positive thing. Um, are there one of the things I'm just curious about right now is as they're going into these discussions, do you feel like they're at, at a comparable levels and feeling like there are um, answers, or is it something where there's really just a lot of diversity still trying to figure out how to handle this? I, I mean, when I look out there, there's just so many different answers, and I'm just wondering what 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 feeling you have about this work, and is it going to be something that's going to take a lot of work to really get some some agreement on where the standards should go, or or, or is it something that uh, is is something where people are often in agreement already on many of the issues? So I think uh, for those familiar with the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, we are not prescriptive in our standards and everything is tied back to the mission of the institution as well as to the student body that uh, institutions serve. So we would envision the same kinds of flexibility in the standard relating to DEI. We also know that our institutions are already um, addressing issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion at their campuses, and they're leveraging accreditation activities to do so. So they are using, for example, self-study as an opportunity to center all of the seven existing standards around the DEI work that they're supporting. So I think that the approach of our commission will continue to want our institutions to be innovative as they think about uh, the DEI work that they may be pursuing at their campuses and um, to embed within those accreditation processes what is most meaningful to them. From an, uh, an institution that is accredited under your commission, Middle States Commission, um, that's one of the things that we've actually valued and we appreciate is we feel that we have an opportunity to establish within our context how we meet the seven standards. and. You know, most of us talk about how meaningful the accreditation event actually is when we engage in the self-study. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you imagine that this will continue because it's, it's, it's been really important conversations that have resulted. It's influenced our strategic planning and it's been a teamwork uh, effort with the commission. The vice presidents are very um, approachable and they're in it with us. So it never feels like, you know, it's us against the accreditor. Or, you know, we're trying to pass a certain test. We feel like we're in it to really, for the betterment of the students and for our constituents. So we do appreciate that and, and, and definitely that it's not as prescriptive as, as uh, you know, we've heard it could be. Well, Tammy, I always appreciate when you give me the opportunity to promote that we are partners with our institutions and we certainly want to assist institutions in any way that we can, uh, whether it's surrounding uh, issues of D or other issues that the institution needs support and assistance. And we often try to match institutions with others. Uh, where we have seen a good practice that another may be looking to explore, we try to partner institutions uh, together. And so we uh, continue to remind everyone that we are far more uh, beyond compliance, that we really are partners in institutional improvement and innovation and uh, this activity of self-reflection and appra appraisal that results in our institutions being stronger for the benefits uh, for the benefit of our students and our communities that we serve. 
Well, thank you so much, Heather. It's been just such a joy and an enriching conversation. Certainly has been a pleasure listening to all the things that the Middle States is doing and, and learning about that. Thank you. Thank you.